where'd you get your band name from? Yeah. So how'd you guys start? Where'd you meet? Like, go online and find it somewhere. You don't need to ask me 30,000 times. It's true. All those very basic questions I are hate those. kind of annoying. See, because you it, get yeah. it. You know what you're doing. Yeah. Some yeah. people just, they just have like, they went on Google and they typed band interview questions. Yeah. How to interview a band or something. And it's like, where'd you get your name? What's your favorite color? Yeah. Who's your favorite band? And it's questions that, okay. that like that that will like force people that are being interviewed to just shut off. And like your next couple questions after those could be fantastic. But our brains will be shut off and you will get the basic, basic answer. This, this whole like conversation, interview, I've, I've told you how we're, I'm personally more concerned about just being a human being and not like um, just a band member and, and about, you know, like wondering how people like our band. I think like... I've never honestly wondered why somebody would want to know anything about us. Like, I, I don't, I don't mean that in some like kind of like, oh, take pity on me kind of way. I just don't think like that. I think that um, I try really hard to have every question answered by the way I present and carry myself. Jeez, I'm. You know what's really funny? Like this, this tour right now, <laughs> because we haven't played in months and barely have practiced. All that's going through my head is what's the next word? What's the next word? What's the next word? But I mean, other, other than that, you know, like I'll hit like a Zen moment or something or, you know, like get in the pocket as they say. And I just have a blast and I enjoy just watching people come back at me. Like, I'm, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about like, wow, that person is saying every single word and it's like my hand just goes right to them. And it's just like that again and again and again. And I, I I get thankful every time. I guess I'm thinking like, I still, since day one, the main thought in my head regarding conditions is like, how? Like, why? Like, why do you care? How do you care? And I don't mean that like in like, a, like an asshole kind of way. I just mean that in like, I'm such a perfectionist and I, I, can't, I can't allow myself to just fully enjoy what I've done. But to see that people fully enjoy what we've done is just, it's mind blowing to me. That, that's one of my favorite moments when you, you're just like hopping around and everybody else is doing the same thing. People are falling into the stage and whatever and he's passing the mic out. Just, it's great. I don't even know what it sounds like out front. It might sound like garbage, but yeah. I'm having a hell of a time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the most exciting times, like that was just more of like a, a fresh feeling, like almost just like a, I don't know, like youthful feeling, was when we were putting out. Um, no pun intended for when we put out fluorescent youth you know we had just signed and it was like that was it for us you know for for a long time we were um you know shopping around the labels doing a lot of stuff on our own when we finally like could go to us could go to best buy and pick up my cd that was like it you know yeah. so that that was a really special time because i feel like that was a, a a point of you know, just us being proud of what we had put in for, you know, at that point, we were banned for about four years. So um, being able to go into the store and, and see your CD was, was special. I completely agree with that. Yeah, and, and I guess to kind of lump it in together, another good time, or like one of my other fondest memories is that we've even had the opportunity to bring and play Conditions music live on stages abroad. Like I'd never, ever in my wildest dreams thought that that'd be possible. Um, yeah, playing in the UK, playing in Australia is, is awesome, awesome. As far as my lyrics being relatable, I think that it's just kind of like, it just happened. I think it's just maybe <laughs> fate or something or just coincidence because uh, I've always just written for my personal therapeutic needs. And uh, the fact that people think that I can articulate it well or that I identify or that my subjects identify with them is just, it, I love it because that's all I've really wanted to do with music. Wanted to like get some anger out, get some demons out, so to speak. And also um, I remember going to shows as a kid and loving to watch when the crowd and the artists were fueling each other. And I've always wanted that. And uh, to see that happen has just been great. But yeah, as far as my relatability, I think that's purely coincidence. Uh, I mean, even to a step further to see kids that have not only my lyrics tattooed on them, but my lyrics tattooed on them in my handwriting is inexplicable. Like, I, I have no words for that. It's, I mean, I'm honored, I'm humbled. It's great, it's a great feeling. 
I've always I've always loved the um, the lyrics that Brandon's right now. I've, I've said that in numerous other interviews, and oh, I love you. I love you, man. Um, yeah, no, they they've always hit home for me because you know our lives have been fairly parallel in a sense for yeah. years now. You know, the better part of a decade, so we've gone through a lot of the same stuff together. And all although like some of the personal experiences might obviously be different. Um, there is a lot of similarities, so um, I can always identify with almost everything that he says. So it it mean like I, and I'm seeing it there with him too. So <laughs> I it, it's mean, true. it does, it does mean a lot to me. There's a lot of lines that stick out uh, that I've even debated like tattoo wise, you know, even for myself. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it it attaches that much to me. <laughs> <laughs> Better life means more to me probably than any song. Other than we we just had an album come out and those songs, uh, there's a couple new songs and those were just fun because it was complete catharsis. I just wrote about things that I've been holding in for a while. But other than that, um, Better Life I think has the most gravity for me because that was like a turning point in how I wrote lyrics. Uh, like I would, I guess in the beginning, kind of think of a topic that's more universal and write about my thoughts and and how I feel about it, and then. Better Life was more me digging inside myself and pulling that out. Um, and that really changed the way that I wrote um, from then on. So I think Better Life was a huge pivotal moment for me. And uh, I wrote it in the shower. And uh, yeah, definitely Better Life. I think my strong suits are an unrelenting quest for perfection. I think that when I sing, like I beat myself up inside to hit the right notes to always be on key like I if I'm off key I get so frustrated so like I focus very hard on writing the uh, or hitting the right notes um, I think that's a strong point um, and I guess my ability to harness my sensitivity man to put that shit into words like I think that's it sensitivity and um, I guess it, the unrelenting quest for perfection like I said I think those are my strong suits I feel like I could be wrong. Everybody has their own opinion, but I, for me, I, I hope that I've always been to my band is just, uh, you know, like stable and like reliable. You know, I, I've never, you know, there's been times where somebody else has had to fill in for something, or it was acoustic set, it was just me and Brandon, and I've there's never been a conditions performance that I wasn't playing. That's true. I wasn't at, you know, wasn't playing. So I feel like I. I'm just confident in making, like, I'm always there. I'm going to do my part. I don't think I've basically almost ever lost my voice. You know, I, I feel like I'm just reliable. And uh, and I think there's something to be said for that. You know, just, you could be the best singer on the planet, best guitarist, drummer, whatever on the planet. But if you have your streaks, if you're streaky, and, you know, you have your shows that you're just killing it, and you have your shows, where, like, people are like, what the hell is this? You know, they're... I, th I think it's something to be said just being like, that dude's solid. He might not be the best at what he does, but he's solid at what he does. <laughs> so I, I take pride in just in, in being confident and knowing what I'm doing. People need to focus on actually being a band and yeah. having music before they worry about the product. People are, are branding themselves before they have anything to sell. You know, they're, I, we have these promo pics and a, and a website and a, a Facebook and Twitter and we have all this. But we have and a manager. Of, and manager and we don't have an EP and we have one song yeah you know like you need to be you need to have a, a variety of songs you need to have a, a, an arsenal of songs you need to be playing your hometown and building up a following that way and the other stuff is important don't get me wrong but before that uh, like the main thing that matters is the music you're called a musician not you're not yeah. a salesman yet <laughs> will be but Focus on writing good songs and being able to actually play them, you know. So that's that's my biggest thing is focus on what the whole purpose is first, writing good songs, and then the rest will come. I think that very well, like just to tie into a, a previous question, I think that that right there could very well be a huge factor in why we didn't get huge or whatever. It's because we didn't have like the resources to project ourselves in a larger than life way. And I think that though we were super vocal and super approachable and super personable, I think that that could have been very backwards for us as far as conditions as a business goes. I think that a lot of the 
I guess, appeal of those bigger bands is how untouchable they seem or how larger than life they seem. That, that, that's a big reason why, like, you know, hair metal and everything in the 80s um, did so well is because they all had buses. They all, you know, didn't hang out with fans. They all, like, you know, just had excess. They can do whatever they wanted. And uh, I think that for us, um, I can specifically recall a, a time being told by a big, um, I guess he's a manager or something, saying that we just look like a band that has given up. And it's like, no, I, I don't understand that, but um, I can understand how it looks maybe that way because we're just so not concerned with being larger than life. We're more concerned with meeting people and being projecting ourselves as human beings as opposed to being, you know, I'm Brandon from Conditions. No, like I'm Brandon Roundtree and that's how I want to be remembered and known. <laughs> the, um, the thing I would say is something that I said in a new song. It's just to, if you really want to do that, you just ha you have to do it. Like, make your art. Like, don't bullshit, don't cut corners, don't settle. Because I think that a lot of ways we settled. <laughs> and we, you know, I don't want to say we failed, because I don't think we failed. I just think that we couldn't grow anymore. Um, so, Absolutely, my advice, my advice, excuse me, to young up-and-comers would be to just absolutely believe in what you do. As cliche as that sounds, you just you have to be ruthless. Like you have to fight for it. Um, that's how everything in this world goes. Like it's very, very Darwinist. Whether people want to be all whimsical and be like, oh, you know, it's all love and it's all like everybody helps each other out. Not the case. <laughs> like fight for it and make it yours, but have fun as well. Like when we started um, in, the yeah, in the early years of conditions, I think internet promotions was huge. I mean, we're, we're all very, very uh, vocal in, in various outlets on social media, like Twitter, Facebook, yeah, MySpace back then, everything like that. We've always been and enjoyed the social aspect. I think because we're all like astonished to even have fans. <laughs> it's like, you like this? Cool. I mean, hey, let, why do you like this? Let's talk about it or something like that. But um, uh, I think it helped us a lot. And also, when, when we started, we were that band that kept winning these weird online um, like competitions yeah. and stuff. Like to play Bamboozle, to play like a Week of Warp Tour, to play like uh, uh, a Battle of the Bands in Los Angeles. Uh, we, it seemed that we were like that contest winning band. Yeah, it was like random. Yeah. I would just sign up, sign us up for everything because I don't mean to sound like boastful, but we were just winning every contest. It was that awesome. Mattered. Yeah, so it was cool. It so. was uh, that was a very beneficial for us, and I think even like some of our first tours that we finally you know went out west and did all this, you know, we'd have kids come up to us and be like, "Hey, we've been following you since yada yada," and because of the internet, you know, and if it wasn't for that. Yeah. We would go out there and no one know, have a clue who we were. I don't hmm. know. It's tough. I think, um, yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, I'd say I, I think it would be okay to absolutely do away with physical discs and stuff. Like physical music. It'll um, happen in probably, <clears throat> very, very I soon. I feel like in the next 10 years it'll be gone. Physical discs, yeah, but there's still there's that disconnect. Because that is also kind of making lazy fans. Whereas, like, oh, I don't need to go out and buy a record now. I can just stream it from the comfort of my home. Well, then that means, I guess, maybe I can stream their concerts live. Or maybe I can hear about it on Instagram and Facebook, what the concert was like. So, like, now, not only are people not buying records, but they're also getting lazy and not coming to shows. Mm -hmm. the, like, the luster of the show is dwindling. It's, like, fading out. And uh, it's, 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 it's very strange. Like, I, I don't know. It's interesting and frustrating to me where people... Um, like can le makes make the choice to spend their money on something, you know, like a full length album from us. Every time we've put one out, has been seven ninety nine on iTunes. That is like a meal, less than a meal, you know. Chipotle. That's like a, two coffees, and people don't want to spend that money. And would rather just get it for free because they can. And then on top of it, like shows, like I'll have people hitting me up like left and right, like, hey, do you got a guest list spot? I'm like, dude. You don't have ten dollars to get into our show, but you have fifty to buy a round of shots for people. Like, if you're gonna say you support me, then just do it. Like, I, I don't know. Like, they they don't want to spend on that sort of thing because they feel like it should be just given to them. 
And I don't think it was like that, you know, years ago when you actually had to buy everything. There was no option for that. So, True. yeah, going based off of what he said in creating lazy fans, whatever, you know, I think that's totally true because people don't feel like they should have to. We got lazy everything fans with... Uh, Lazy fans with a huge sense of entitlement. I don't know what happened, but I think it's just convenience. We're, everything in this world is a product of convenience, and I think that the music industry has been hit very hard. <laughs> I think that maybe um, we made, you know, I, maybe some some bad business choices. I I don't know. Um, maybe didn't have the correct team behind us. Uh, maybe burned some bridges we shouldn't have. I I really, yeah. I honestly don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, it was frustrating to watch friends' bands like go off and, and make the right decisions and get, I guess, into different levels of uh, fame and, and, and fortune, so to speak. But, um, you know, I couldn't tell you. I would love to know. I really would. I, I think there was a lot of, uh, a lot of early on decisions that, uh, you know, when we put certain people around us that probably shouldn't have, you know. So I, I think a lot of it was was business wise, and we thought we were being smart about stuff at the time. But you know, in hindsight, we, I don't think we knew that we were. Yeah. Um, so when it came down to taking the path that we took, you kind of look back and you're like, man, we had this on the table. Whatever happened to that? Like, how did that disappear? And it's because it was somebody above, you know, someone that we hired to work for us, blowing that. And, yeah. and burning that opportunity and then us having to, I don't want to say, um, you know, to compromise, but, you know, kind of taking what we could get after someone else ruined something on our behalf. And that's frustrating. Yeah. And obviously those people have been fired, but, I mean, it's hard to come back from that. Yeah. Like, I, I, won't, I'm, I won't miss traveling. I won't miss driving eight hours of shows. <laughs> um, I won't miss eating fast food all the time. I hate all that. Yeah. But the shows themselves, once all the crap is out of the way, like the loading in and the sound check and whatever, and I know I'm not trying to sound like jaded and, and whatever on all that stuff because it's obviously important, but the actual show itself, when you get up there and people are just going nuts... And that connection we were talking about, True. I will miss that. Yeah. That's, that's an incredible feeling you can't replace. Yeah, like when you're about three songs in and you guys are just dialed in together, you versus the crowd, and it just works. That's that's awesome. There's no, there's no like, there's no words for that. It's just, it's such, it's it's cool. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to blow it, but yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> that's what I'll miss. I'm already in the nine to five life. It's work, school, whatever. Um, just trying to my my biggest thing was finding something more stable you know i i, I appreciate and i love everything that i did i'm gonna miss the hell out of this i love traveling but i don't i won't miss not knowing what my finances will be it's just the pains of, of growing up you know yeah. i have bills to pay and it sucks but i i'm over the days of scrap like scrounging for money and and working whatever just to get by and, and do whatever, you know. So I, I appreciate, I've come to appreciate the the sellout life, you know. Yeah. Knowing what my hours are, knowing yeah. what the pay is, and knowing that on Friday at 5, I'm, I'm good for a few days. So um, people might be let down by that. Um, music will always be a part of me in some capacity, whether that's to myself or whether something else comes down the road. But for now... As a decompressing from this, I, I don't need anything. I just need to have a stable life. Yeah, I'm very much in the same boat. I'm just very, very um, looking forward to having a personal schedule as opposed to a schedule that's tied to other people. Like, I'm, I'm so ready to be a whole human being as opposed to fragments of one. So, like, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, I guess, have roots. And, yeah, I've been looking forward to that for a while. You know, as I say, music comes even the savage beast. Like, that's very, very true with me. I, I run to it when I feel anything less than okay. Um, so, I don't know. I have a computer. I have the ability to record. We'll see. <laughs>